morning and welcome to worship with Ebenezer. My name is Chris Beckman and I'm the corporate chaplain for all of Ebenezer. And if you're watching this series of worship service videos, it means you're probably part of our Ebenezer family. We started in 1917 with good Norwegian Lutherans who saw the immigrants in Minneapolis who weren't being cared for at the end of life and created Ebenezer. And today we are well over 100 communities all the way from Grand Marais up in the north to Des Moines, Iowa, and soon to be in Wisconsin. So if you're watching this, think of yourself as this big family of communities, and we're glad you're part of it on this day. Let's begin our worship today with our opening hymn, Holy, Holy, Holy. this morning continues with the litany and I invite you the congregation to respond with the bold portions of the liturgy. Alleluia the Spirit of the Lord fills the world. Let the righteous be glad and rejoice before God. Alleluia. With tongues of fire the Spirit kindles the apostles zeal. They declare in new tongues the wonderful works of God. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and blessed be His kingdom now and forever. Alleluia, come Holy Spirit. Fill the hearts of your faithful people with your love. Alleluia. The Lord be with you, and also with you. Let us pray. Gracious Lord, through water and the Spirit, you have made us your own. You forgave us all our sins and brought us to newness of life. Continue to strengthen us with the Holy Spirit and daily increase in us your gifts of grace, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord, the spirit of joy in your presence, through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. Amen. Our gospel for this 10th week of Pentecost is from the book of John, the 6th chapter, verses 24 to 35. So when the crowd saw that neither Jesus nor his disciples were there, they themselves got into the boats and went to Capernaum looking for Jesus. When they found him on the other side of the lake, they said to him, Rabbi, when did you come here? Jesus answered them, Very truly I tell you, you are looking for me, not because you saw signs, but because you ate your fill of the loaves. Do not work for the food that perishes, but for the food that endures for eternal life, which the Son of Man will give you. For it is on him that God the Father has set his seal. Then they said to him, What must we do to perform in him who he has sent? So they said to him, what sign are you going to give us then, so that we may see it and believe you? What work are you performing? Our ancestors ate the manna in the wilderness, as it is written. He gave them bread from heaven to eat. Then Jesus said to them, Very truly I tell you, 
It was not Moses who gave you the bread from heaven, but it is my Father who gives you the true bread from heaven. For the bread of God is that which comes down from heaven and gives life to the world. They said to him, Sir, give us this bread always. Jesus said to them, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never be hungry, and whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. Here ends our gospel reading. Will you join with me in prayer? May the words of my mouth and the meditations of our heart be ever acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strength and Redeemer. Amen. If you remember, this gospel passage comes after the feeding of the 5,000, which is why when Jesus said, Have you followed me and are you expecting, do you believe, because you've already eaten your fill with the feeding of the 5,000? The young boy who donated his barley loaves and his fish that then were distributed to all the people who were gathered there. This passage in John is part of what is known as the bread discourses, or basically the conversations about bread. And today especially we're focusing on this phrase that we as Christians and people of faith are to do the work of God to do the work for bread that does not perish. So that's what we're kind of wondering. What is this work that Jesus wants us to do that does not perish? You see, if we do our daily work, our daily bread, that bread perishes. If you don't eat it, it will eventually mold. But what Jesus is inviting us to look at is to believe and work for the bread of life that does not rot that does not perish. What is that? And maybe this passage comes at the right time in our journey of life and faith. As we begin to come out of this pandemic, I'm aware and keenly of how many of us have already been having bread conversations. Now, I don't know if it rises to the level of faith, but maybe. I think I've told you before that I'm still continuing to be amazed that in this market where we were out of toilet paper, where there were meat shortages, where we've had a wood shortage, a lumber shortage, the one thing that always still sticks out to me is how could we have run out of yeast? I still remember standing there at Target and seeing a handmade cardboard sign at Target that said, here are the things that we do not have today. Toilet paper, Clorox wipes, and dried yeast. Were there really that many people baking bread? Yeah. Whatever got into people during this pandemic, they thought, now is the time. I've always wanted to bake bread. Or, I remember my grandmother baking bread. And I've always wanted to try that sourdough starter that I've got sitting there in the refrigerator. But for whatever reason, we as the people of God have been having conversations about bread. And I wonder if in the midst of that, there might not be some kernel and connection because Jesus is using bread. Give us this day our daily bread. Is there a connection between the bread that we bake with our hands and this bread of life that Jesus himself is talking about? Whatever, though, is we know that this conversation is important. You see, in chapter 6 of John, where we are at, there are four times where John uses a doublet of saying, truly, truly. And whenever you see in the Bible the word truly, truly, you ought to pay attention like, ah, what's coming is important. And the Bible verse or the Bible meaning of actually the word truly is amen. So in a way, the text is saying, Amen, Amen. In fact, I always can hear my New Testament professor who never said truly. He always said, Amen. And so when he would translate or read this passage for us, he would say, Amen, Amen. And it was a way of getting the attention of the people. And it ought to be a way of getting our attention too. Amen, Amen. Whatever is coming now is extremely important, that this matters. 
And in a way, is saying, this is a guarantee from God. Jesus is saying, Amen, Amen. I am now going to tell you what this bread of life is that does not perish. And the answer? If you believe that Jesus is the bread of life, life itself, that's the work. That's it. Believe that Jesus himself is the bread of life, which he says at the very last page, at the very last verse, I am the bread of life. That's it. That's the whole essence of our faith. Jesus saying, I am the bread of life. I guess I should just stop the sermon. We should cut the video. We don't even know to go to church anymore or read. We've got it. I am the bread of life. That's all you need. I'm saying it with emphasis because I know, of course, that's not true. And oftentimes in living out our faith, it is not just saying the words, yeah, Jesus, I believe you are the bread of life. That is not what faith is about, just simply uttering the words. As an example, if I were to say to you, can you list for me the top five things that are important for wellness? If I were to say, if you wanted to be a well, self-cared, full upstanding human being, what would be the five things that your doctor would say to you, here's what you need to do if you want to be well and happy and whole? Diet, exercise, sleep, meditation, have a community. You can walk into any bookstore, noble bookstore, secondhand bookstore, you can go on the internet, and every last one of them is going to say, if you want to be happy, if you want to be whole, if you want to be well, if you don't want to be sick, diet, exercise, sleep, meditation, and community. We all know this. And if we just, all we had to do was say, I slept well last night, even though I was only sleeping for five hours. Oh, I have a great diet, even though I just went to McDonald's. The reality, my friends, is we can say all we want that these are the five things we need to know. But it's living it, exercising, sleeping right, proper diet, building community. None of those things happen by simply saying that they're going to be true. Can you make yourself well by saying, I've got friends all over the place, when you only have one friend? It is not enough to simply say the words. The saying of the words involves an imbuing, it involves an embodied response that engages us. The same thing is true in our faith. What must I do to live out my faith, they asked Jesus. Prayer, fasting, and giving gifts. The Bible is quite clear. If you pray, if you fast, if you give gifts, you are on the path of faith. And yet how many of us for that is hard? Prayer, to fast, to be generous with our gifts. And the people that are listening to Jesus this day are kind of like us. And I love it because they have this practical response. Jesus says, I am the bread of life. I am the answer. And then they say this beautiful thing. Well, but how do I do that, Jesus? How do I do that work? How do I work for the bread that does not rot? And what I would say to you in the nutshell of this is that the reason that we people of faith are baptized, are confirmed, are living our lives in the faith is because our faith life is not something that just happens and isn't getting developed the rest of our life. It involves a certain living out, a working out, an embodying of it. Our friends in AA have a wonderful collection of phrases, many of them which strike at the heart of these central truths. And they have one that I really love. It says, it works if you work it. It works if you work it. If you believe in wellness, it only is going to work 
if you work it. You're only going to have good sleep if you work at sleeping. <laughs> You're only going to have a good diet if you work at your diet. You are only going to exercise and have good exercise if you actually go to the gym or get on the bike. Meditating your way to exercise is not going to work. The same is true with our faith. You have to work it. It is only going to work if you work it. Your faith is only going to be this radically transformative, inspirational, powerful thing if you work at it. In order to get the bread that will not rot, we have to work at it. We have to live it out. We have to embody it. And the beautiful thing is that it's not a one and done thing. If it were, once we got confirmed, no problem. Once I got ordained, no problem. The reality, however, is that our baptism, our ordination, our becoming part of the priesthood of all believers is simply the beginning. And we begin green and raw, and we spend our whole lifetime trying to figure out what does it mean to work for bread that does not rot? What does it mean to be empowered and inflamed by a life of faith? What does it mean, and is it possible to perhaps imagine that the things we do for wellness can also be connected to faith? Hmm, maybe bread. Maybe that's what all these folks are kind of starting to learn about the art of baking bread. Anybody try that lately? Anybody remember what baking bread is like? For me, whenever I bake bread, I always assume it's a half-day process. You know, by the time you proof the yeast, you gather the ingredients, you mix it up and get that first part ready for the first rise, which can take an hour, and then you punch it down or put it into rolls, and then it rises again. And then you put that lovely egg wash on it, and a friend of mine always, when they want that crust, they'll throw ice cubes into the bottom of the oven to give it that moisture that will kind of create a crackly crust on it. And then it comes out. And that's usually about four hours later. But it is the treasure and the creativity and the power that comes from that. My godmother, Agnes, lived right across the street from me. And uh, she was a bread baker. And I still remember, I'm from a little town, and my aunt and uncle lived right across the street from us, which is awfully close for family. But the beauty of that was the bread. And every so often, my aunt would be baking bread. And after she had spent four hours proofing the yeast and baking it, and when it came out of the oven, she would run it across the street. She'd bring this bread with a stick of butter and a pot of jam. Always bread and jam They're, and butter. They always came together. And as a young teenage boy, you could eat whatever you wanted. So we would plow through that loaf. Carbs? Who cares? Bread. Melting butter. Jam. Now... Is that not the bread that rots? I think you're missing the point. You see, what is bread? Flour, yeast, water, salt, basic ingredients. Every last recipe, those four ingredients, they don't seem very exotic at all. But you add creativity, you add passion, you add intentionality, you add time in our world. And those human basic ingredients become something amazing. You see, the gift for my aunt was not bread. That was simply the vehicle for something else. The bread was the vehicle for love. When my aunt ran that bread across the street with a bar of salted butter, and raspberry jam from her own raspberries. And I, as a boy, led into it 
and ate as much as I wanted. There's nothing quite like warm bread, where the butter simply melts on it. The point was not the bread. The point was not the butter or the jam, or that even that she had made it. The point was that it was a gift of love. Jesus says, I am the bread of life. I'm standing right here with you. I am the bread of life. Connecting to me is what this is about. How do you continue to live out that? So, bake bread. Do things that are beautiful and wonderful and creative. Sleep well. Eat well. Exercise. But you see, those are only tools for the realness of what we are about. Wellness and faith. So perhaps the next time you bake bread, or the next time you receive bread, the next time you bake bread, I want you to run a loaf to someone that you care about. Take that loaf and a stick of butter and a pot of jam and go. And know that what you're not bringing is just bread and water and salt and yeast. You are bringing love. That's what Jesus' simple message is today. I am the bread of life. He who comes to me shall never be hungry. He who comes to me shall never be thirsty. I pray that you will receive such gifts of love and care and faith. And I pray that you will find ways to share those gifts of love and faith and worth. I'll leave you with the phrase again from AA. It works if you work it. You're going to be well. It's going to work only if you work it. And the same is true with our faith. You're going to be faithful only if you work it. Amen. Please join us as we sing together our hymn of the day, When I Survey the Wondrous Cross. Please join us as we sing together our hymn of the day, When I Survey the Wondrous Cross. of glory died my richest gain I count but loss and poor contempt on all my pride forbid it Lord that I should Continue our worship now using the words of the Apostles' Creed as we celebrate and lift up our faith together. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate and was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. 
On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. And now let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus, and for all people according to their needs, saying, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Let us pray. Father, we praise you for the resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ, from the dead. Shed his glorious light on all people, that we may live as those who believe in the triumph of the cross. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for those who at this season are receiving in baptism your Son's new life by water and the Spirit. Dying with Christ, may they know the power of his resurrection. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for all who we know and love, both near and far. May their eyes be opened to see the glory of the Word who became flesh. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for those who suffer pain and anguish. Grant them the faith to reach out toward the healing wounds of Christ and be filled with his peace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We remember before you those who have died in the hope of the resurrection. Unite us with them in your undying love. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Join our voices, we pray, Lord our God, to the songs of all your saints, in proclaiming that you give us the victory through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And now let us pray the prayer that our Lord Jesus taught us so long ago. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Let us now be blessed and dismissed as we go forth from this worship service. May Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit bless you now and forever. Amen. And let us now go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. I want to thank you for joining with us in worship today, and we're glad that you're part of our Ebenezer family. May you know that our prayers for you and your prayers for us are heard and welcomed, and we give thanks that we are all part of this unity of faith. Join us now as we sing together our closing hymn, our closing hymn, The Church's One Foundation. Church's one foundation is Jesus Christ her Lord. She is his new creation by water and the word. From heaven he came and sought her to be.